Hi guys, I'm Elias Pedersen of Vancouver Canucks. Uh, welcome to Stockholm, Sweden. All right, here's your ticket. Let's go to the tour. Let's go. This is a exclusive injury. <laughs> I don't think I've done this. You live in Stockholm? You've never done uh, this yeah, before? No. Well, not like this. Tell us about the city. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It's right on water. I train downtown, so it's nice to, to um, just walk around. Now, you, where you're from and where you grew up, that's about a five hour drive from here, right? Uh, yeah, about yeah. five hours, exactly. A, a small village called Onge, little hockey town. What's the best thing about Stockholm? Now I like living in big cities. My trainer lives here, and I got a lot of hockey friends here as well. So. so did Vancouver do that to you? Vancouver made you a big city guy, eh? Yeah, it did. It transitioned me to uh, to a big city guy. Well, Elias Pedersen is the engine that drives the Canucks. Pedersen putting together a season to remember. He's got so much hockey ahead of him, you get excited thinking about what he might do. Recently, you were asked, what are your goals for this year? And you said, last year's season high, 102 points. I want to beat that. But here's my other question. What would you more like to do? Beat 102 points or hit 50 goals? Uh, 50 goals. That would be a, no, I hit the, a big one, over 100 points, so 50. It would be a cool one. Can you do it? Yeah, I like to think so. I just got to be a little more selfish and shoot sometimes. I like to think I can break it. Uh, there's no doubt with your shot you can do it, but that's the thing. Like, I wonder if you're too unselfish to score 50 goals. Yeah, I mean, I've always been a pass-first minor player. I hear a lot that I need to shoot more, so I start listening to some people. Here comes Elias Patterson with speed. Two overtime winners this year already. Wrist shot scores! Make it three for Elias Patterson. Last year was a crazy year. When you look back at last season, what are the things that stand out for you? I mean, personally, hitting over 100 points was, uh, I'm very happy with that. But for the team, um, I think, I mean, we had a bad start. You now we had a coaching change and a lot of other stuff happening. But I mean, I think after Talkit took over, I think he set a standard of what we want to do as a team. After he came in, we won a lot of games and we got a good sense of how we need to play to be successful. You talked about him setting a standard. How did he do that? I think just team first, whatever you do, it's for the team, it's for the logo in the chest, uh, it's for the fans to play for, but like you play for your teammates. It sounds really cliche, but it's, it's uh, true. It's so true. How does he push you? He, he wants the best for me. He wants me to be more vocal. He wants me to be to lead the team and uh, just be the best version of myself. You're a great player. I can always tell you don't really like to talk very much. <laughs> I just wonder, like, if he wants you to talk more, are you going to be comfortable with that? Are you, are you going to say, look, I talk on the ice and that's the way I do it? Yeah, that's always been my thing. Um, and I mean, I've always been a, more of a shy person. I hated <laughs> schoolwork, presentations from yeah. the class. One of those things that I've never been comfortable about, but I'm trying. The Vancouver Canucks have a player expected to put up big numbers, but I guess the question is, can Elias Pedersen do it at the tender age of 19? Can he do it right away? I was watching tape the other night of your first game. What do you remember about that night? I remember the first goal like it was yesterday. Take us through it, break it down, that whole play. Lou Erickson made a good play on the half wall. And I chipped into Manos me and Julio out on a 2 1. I mean, I was still like freaking out. Oh my God, this is my first NHL game. Uh, and then now I got a 2 on 1, and, and I've been doing this my whole life. Here's Elias Pepsin, he shoots, scores his first goal in the NHL. Shot the puck and went in. I just I just blacked out. I just couldn't believe it. Welcome to the NHL, Elias Pedersen. What a shot by him on this play. Well, I can still tell, like, here we are, what, five years later? Yeah, and look at the smile on your oh, face. Yeah, I, rem I mean, it just brings me back. To, I just remember the feeling of living my dream, playing in my first NHL game, then scoring on my first shot with my parents in the stands. And uh, after the game, all my friends sent text messages here telling me that they woke up the neighbors because they were screaming so much. So it just brings back very good memories. Now, you were joking before that you're not selfish enough. In that situation, there was no way you were. Yeah, no, I was. Sh I was shooting that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah, sorry, Pulia, but I was shooting that the whole, the whole way. <laughs>
I always remember that look on the bench, the look of satisfaction that yeah. you had after. What were you thinking in that moment? Yeah, it was uh, another cool moment. The announcer said my name, that I scored, etc. And, and then the whole crowd started chatting Patterson, and I just like, wow, this is this, this is, is cool. real. This is real. This is cool. And I just remember getting chills. Pedersen's on the record as saying he wants to remain a Canuck, so it behooves Patrick Alvine and the Canucks vein trust to make that happen. One more bit of business, extension. You're eligible to sign. Yeah. Where do things stand? I'm not in a rush to sign. Um, I'm, uh, I mean, I got one, one more year left over there, and uh, I don't want to rush into anything, because I still don't know myself if it's going to be a short term or a long term, but it's going to be uh, probably my biggest contract so far, and so I don't want to stress anything. Uh, Just going to get off to a good start, focus on that? Yeah, that's been the main goal. I mean, the whole summer I'm just trying to prepare myself as much as possible with training, trying to gain a little bit of weight, some muscles, and uh, and yeah, especially get off to a good start with the team. And yeah, that's been my mindset all summer. Olympics. Yeah. I know it means a lot to the players. Yeah. Do you think we're going to get back there? I hope so. I don't think, I mean... Do the players talk yeah. about it a lot, or...? Uh, I haven't been in a lot of those conversations. I can't speak for myself, and I would love a best-on-best -best tournament. The hockey world would definitely wants it to see Canada, US, Sweden, Finland, all the countries battle against each other. So, um, I mean, I really hope we get back to that soon. So... It's the gold medal game of the Olympics. Yeah. You're playing Canada. Yeah. You're down three to two with a minute left. Yeah. Need a goal to tie. I know you're going on the ice. Yeah. And your coach says, which five other Swedes do you want on the ice with you? Who are you putting uh, on? Carlson and Dalene okay. on the blue line. Um, three more forwards. Three more forwards. Oh. So, so, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. This is why you don't want to be a coach. Yeah, exactly. I'm always going to be a player. Uh, <laughs> I don't like the tough decisions. Um, I'll say Sibanejad, Philip Forsberg, and Nylander, because then I have three righties to pass so they can shoot one time. Smart. And then Dalene and Carlson on the blue line. OK, there's five seconds left. You've got one pass to make to tie the game. Who's burying that shot? Who are you giving it to? I've seen, I think I'll, you're pretty much spot here. <laughs> thought it was going to be an inter easy interview. <laughs> I'll say, Sabanija. And he buries it. Yeah, he's got a hard shot. All right, 3-3 three, three going into overtime. Who scores the golden goal then? You do. Yeah, in a perfect will. Uh, yeah, that'd be the dream. But um, let's bring home a, a goal to Sweden uh, for, I mean, for all the Sweden to chair would be, would be a dream. Hearing you talk like that, the idea of winning in Vancouver, they've been close yeah. three times, yeah. three Stanley Cup finals. I sometimes think of what it would be like to be a key player on a team that wins there for the first time. Do you think about moments like that? Oh yeah, I, I dream of moments like that. Uh, I remember winning the Swedish championship with Vakora, and I don't know what's the right word? euphoria. If that's yes, that's, that's exactly the right, the right word. Yeah, it, and like I can look back at those memories, and I get like I get emotional watching that because I played to win. I mean, I'm a big Lionel Messi fan. Mm -hmm. and I wanted obviously him to win the World Cup, and when they won, to see what it meant to all of them, I remember just I was just crying, mm -hmm. like getting emotional. Yeah, because like I. I'm an emotional person, and uh, just seeing what it means to them, and I think if that ever happened to me, I'd, yeah, I'd for sure, just be happy tears. To make his lifelong dream to win the World Cup for Argentina, and uh, what it meant to him, uh, yeah, I, I get inspired by both things. Thanks very much for all your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me.